All right, hello, my name is Chris. Um, I attend McAllister College, and for VRU, I've been working with Dr. Karpov to uh, investigate the electric field distributions of cylindrical filament redox wearing memory cells. So um, traditional memory cells are reaching a scalability limit, so in order to keep increasing the density of memory cells, uh, scientists and researchers are um, looking at a number of alternatives to the traditional cell types. So one of the front runners in the search for new cell types is uh, redox RAM memory. Um, these memory cells are easily scalable, they're um, CMOS compatible, so they work with our current semiconductor technology. Um, they show promise for 3D stackability, and most importantly, they're very small and they have a very fast uh, switching path. So uh, moving forward in bringing this technology to the uh, mass market, we have to get a better understanding of the switching mechanism of these cells, and that's um, part of what my uh, project is contributing to. Okay, so in order to make a reram cell, you have to apply a potential difference between two capacitor plates. Now, in some materials, a filament will start to grow from one of the plates towards the other one in order to reduce the total um, electric energy of the system. Um, now, this graph here shows, um, in red, that's the uh, reset mode with the positive voltage and the positive current, and the blue is the set mode with the negative voltage and negative current. Now, because we can um, set and reset these cells, we have um, effectively either a one or a zero, and because of that, we can use these types of cells as memory cells. Okay, so uh, my goal is to find the electrostatic part of the um, free energy in terms of the, uh, uh, of the filament height. And in order to do this, I have to model it using uh, software. So um, the software that I use is Console Multiphysics. So for the next few slides, I'm going to show you some of the models that I built. Um, First is the uh, fixed charge model, and for this model, um, you can't really see it too well, but these are two capacitor plates. I fixed the amount of charge on each of the plates, and um, when, we, when I did this, we expect the energy to um, behave according to this equation. And um, so then, when we uh, increase the filament height, we're also increasing the capacitance. So if we increase the capacitance, we're, we expect to see a lower total electric energy. And here are the results. So our predictions were correct, that's very reassuring. Um, if we see a decrease in total electric energy, we can expect that the filament will be able to grow spontaneously because um, the growth of the filament reduces the uh, total electric energy of the system. Um, you might be wondering about the um, x-axis here. Um, right now it's in uh, nanometers, whereas in other models it's in uh, centimeters. That isn't really too important for our purposes. We don't, we're not looking for anything directly quantifiable, we're more looking for the uh, trend and behavior of different arrangements. All right, so the next model is the uh, fixed voltage model. Everything is exactly the same as the uh, fixed charge model, except that um, I have a set fixed voltage between the plates. And um, when we set the voltage fixed, we expect the total energy to behave according to this equation. Now, um, it's the exact same equation as in the previous model, except we've replaced the uh, charge Q with CV. And now the capacitance is in the numerator. So as we increase the filament height, we're going to increase the capacitance, and therefore we expect um, an increase in total energy. So that's what we saw, which is, again, very reassuring. Um, this little bit at the end, don't worry about that. That's, that is where the, um, the, the filament actually has grown so far that it reached the other capacitor plate. So it's effectively um, just a bit of conducting wire. And um, when we see a result like this, we, um, we wouldn't expect the filament to grow on its own because um, the growth would in be increasing the entire, or the total system energy. And um, actually, if we had a filament that had been growing before, if we apply a uh, fixed voltage between the capacitor plates, um, the filament will probably, um, we'll see some recession and it'll go back to its um, point of origin. So now that we've seen the, uh, what the fixed voltage and the fixed charge initial conditions do independently, we want to um, combine the two. So in order to do that, we had to um, build, the si build the capacitor plate system and then embed it into a circuit here. So this is the external circuit that we built. Um, C2 represents this capacitor, whereas we set the value of the resistor and the capacitor independently. Um, and so what this circuit does is it simulates um, applying a voltage pulse to um, these main capacitor plates. And that voltage pulse, uh, it takes some amount of time to um, establish a fixed voltage between the plates. And so that time um, for 
for the circuit that we built, the time that it takes for the voltage pulse to establish to establish that fixed voltage is um, it's proportional to the characteristic RC time scale of that circuit. Um, so what we expect to see is that we'll get some initial growth right away via nucleation. That happens very quickly. However, further growth requires um, more of the material from the uh, capacitor plate of origin to uh, diffuse upwards into the filament. And so that happens on a much longer time scale. So our challenge is that we have to balance the RC time constant where um, we can't have the RC time constant too short where we get a fixed voltage right away and then we wouldn't expect any further filament growth. And we also don't want an RC, time, an RC time constant that's too large, because if we did that, we would have a memory cell that wouldn't switch very quickly, which defeats the purpose of the uh, creating a new technology. Oh, and um, I ran this model first in 2D just because it was a lot shorter on the calculation times and it was easier to troubleshoot. So here are the results. Um, I would love to have a legend for this, but it would probably take up the size of the graph itself. So each one of these um, different lines is a, is a different time step where um, more voltage, or it's coming closer and closer to a fixed voltage between these two capacitor plates. So at first, when we increase the filament height, we're seeing um, further and further, we're seeing uh, the fixed charge behavior. However, after a little while, it starts to behave more and more like um, fixed voltage. So um, this tipping point where it goes from increases to um, increases to decreases, that's important because if we see an increase in total um, electric energy, we wouldn't expect the filament to grow. But if we see a decrease in that total electric energy, we do expect the filament to grow. And um, they all cave off again right there once it reaches the, other, the opposite capacitor. So now, once we see that it works well in two dimensions, we, um, I built the model again and just made it in 3D. Everything's exactly the same, but we're adding an image. So these re results are, um, they show the same thing, except that um, the relative scale of the changes are much smaller. The decrease is much smaller, the increases are much smaller. And uh, that has to do with the relative size of the filament compared to the um, the entire capacitor system. In 3D, the filament is much smaller relative to the whole system than in 2D. And um, so what we've shown is that this is actually a thermodynamic view where we're looking at it in terms of free energy. And the thermodynamics of the phase transi transition, that is the uh, switching mechanism behind the filament growth, is determined globally and not by um, just the uh, capacitor plates alone. It has to do with um, everything else that you attach to it. So here are the side-by-side -side results. Again, the 2D model shows the differences a lot easier just because of the filament being relatively larger, um, but they effectively show the same thing. So moving forward, um, the model that I built, so I only showed the uh, changes in height. However, um, I also made different steps for the uh, filament radius, and um, we can change the RC time constant easily. So it's not very hard to alter the model in order to look at um, some different parameters other than the ones that I showed in um, the graphs on this, this uh, PowerPoint. Um, and so the results here again show that there's a trade-off in the uh, characteristic RC time scale where if we make it too short, the voltage will become fixed between the plates too quickly and the filament won't grow. However, if we make um, the characteristic time scale too large, then the capacitor won't switch very fast. Um, here are just some, uh, I'll list a few of the papers that have been published on the experimental side. Um, so going forward, hardware companies, um, including Intel, they're very interested in this technology because they can keep increasing the uh, memory cell density and keep, well, keep running according to Moore's law, hopefully. Um, and um, my mentor professor, Dr. Karpov, is working with Israeli researchers as well as um, some colleagues at Intel in order to better understand these memory cells. Thank you. Any questions for Chris? Yes. What parameters in the model are specific for the kinds of transistors that you're studying? Uh, specific to the kinds of... No, it's... You know, you're studying a certain kind of transistor, of course, industry is interested in it. Mm. What parameters go into your model that are tied to the properties of the transistor that you're studying? 
Okay, so um, let's get a picture here. Okay, so one of the, the parameter that I changed primarily is the uh, height of the filament. So I started um, at lower heights and then increased it upwards until it's very close to the uh, opposite capacitor plate. Now that changed the uh, that changed the energy of the system pretty pretty readily. However, when I changed the radius, um, I made it wider. There was less of an effect, but that also impacts the uh, performance of the, uh, this. Does it plate. depend on the composition of the filament? Um, for the models that I ran, um, this blue section was a dielectric, and everything else was just taken to be air, which, I mean, it doesn't make sense if you're actually building it, but for this model, um, it calculated the total energy um, well enough. But um, for the actual, um, w when we're actually building it, the two, um, the two materials that they use most often with, uh, for these, this type of capacitor is, um, I think, titanium oxide and, um, and tantalum. Well, there's one other kind, but they're primarily uh, researching. Yes? I played with the console a little bit. Uh, how did you find uh, the learning curve to be it's real powerful? Um, well, the graphical interface helps out. So building the, uh, well, the 2D model is pretty easy. But um, building the three-dimensional model didn't take that long, actually building the shapes. But um, finding out how to vary the parameters, like yeah. changing the height and the radius, uh, that was definitely the, the harder thing to do. And also, um, when I ran the, uh, the fixed voltage and fixed charge models, um, I had it on a stationary time setting, which was um, a lot easier than um, making it time dependent, which is what I had to do with the external circuit or else um, no charges would flow and we wouldn't really see anything uh, different than um, the, what we find independently. Any questions? All right. Let's thank you.